Hey, have you missed me? So in this video we're gonna talk about one thing, Laravel multi-tenancy. Based on the subdomain, we are gonna identify the tenant and show content based on that, independent if the said tenant is connected or not. There are different use cases for this, the most common one is the blogging system. For example, here we have the subdomain fire and it is showing hello fireboy. Now we have the subdomain the one which is saying hello the one. The content is taken from the database in our example and we are gonna see how to do that. Also if no tenant is found for the subdomain, we show a not found page specifying the specific subdomain was not found. We are gonna use wildcard subdomains so that no matter what subdomain is entered, it is gonna work. So first, let's open a browser and hop on the official Laravel website. Go to the documentation, then copy the following and paste it in the terminal. If you don't have Composer installed, just install it by typing sudo apt install composer. I'll put the command in the video description below. Now copy the install command and paste it in the terminal. A new folder will be created with the name of the website you entered. So make sure the terminal is opened in the folder where you want the new website to be created. Now in the browser we must navigate in the public folder inside the Laravel folder to see the website. And we have a permission issue with the Laravel storage folder. To fix it, we navigate to the my site folder with the terminal and enter the following command. Refresh the page and it works. Now we navigate to the Apache 2 sites available folder and enter the following command to copy the default website configuration file. After that, with sudo vim modify the my site conf file we just created. Press i to enter insert mode and enter the name of the laravel website folder slash public. Same down here and right after it enter the following line to attach the domain name to it. Press the escape key then enter two dots wq to write and quit. Next, tell Apache to enable this new website file we created and restart the Apache web server. Go to mysite.me and no, forgot to do one thing. We need to edit the host file to add the domain name. Enter the localhost IP address then the domain name which in our case is mysite.me then press the escape key and two dots wq to write and quit. Now let's try again and it works. We see the default Laravel page. What we need to do now is go to phpMyAdmin. If you want to see how to install it and more in-depth local server setup guide, go and see my other video that explains just that. Link in the description below. Ok, click on the databases tab on top and then enter the name of the database for the website, um, in our case my site, then click create. Now click the SQL tab on top and write the following to quickly create the tenants table. Alright, the tenants table has been created, select it and then click the insert tab and insert some tenants. Great, now we need to open a terminal in the Laravel website folder and create a model with the artisan command. A model is used to communicate with the database and it will represent each row of its type. For example, we created the tenant model and observe how we wrote it to singular and not the plural word. And here is the file that was created to represent the model tenant. 
and here you can specify the table name like so if it is named differently than the plural model name. In our case it is tenant so it was optional for us to specify it but I wanted you to see. In this model we will also create the static function that will identify the right tenant. Also this function is only called once. And to do so we are gonna identify it based on the subdomains. So we need to get the URL from the HTTP host. At this point we echo out the URL variable to see what we get. Before going any further we need to call this function once in the routes web file. And we see that it works, we get the mysite.me HTTP host. Now let's try to go to the first subdomain tenant we have. Ok, this means we need to add it to the hosts file. A live server will be using bind with wildcard subdomains and you won't be having to add it manually, but in our case we are on a local server so we'll just encode it by hand. Sudo vim to edit the hosts file, press i to enter insert mode, add the desired subdomains and press escape key then write two dots wq to write and quit to save the file. Now, if we access the subdomain like I explained in the first video, we will need to tell Apache uh, to catch all wildcard subdomains and direct them to Laravel. So again, navigate to the Apache 2 sites available folder and edit the my site configuration file and inside add the following server alias. Restart the Apache web server and hit refresh. Now as you can see, we are now on the Laravel website. Now from this URL we will need to get the subdomain, so we will explode the string into an array containing each word separated by dots. Since we are accessing the subdomain the one that my site .me, the subdomain will be the first word in the array. Also you should check if the first word is www then the subdomain becomes the second word. Now let's find out the tenant. First here on top let's say we are using this tenant class. And now let's find the tenant based on the subdomain by getting the first occurrence it finds. At this point we want to check if the tenant exists and if not we are gonna show a page telling the tenant was not found. So go to the resources view and create a file named tenant not found that blade.php. Blade is the templating file shipped with Laravel so that you can display PHP variables inside HTML code. So let's create a title saying the tenant was not found and also show the tenant we tried to access. So in this view function we'll write the name of the view file tenant not found and we'll pass in the php variable tenant containing the subdomain we entered. Let's give it a try. Oops we forgot to enter the database credentials. Open the .env file and enter the mysql database credentials. If you want to see how to set up a mysql user go and see the first video, link in the description below. Refresh, it works. Now enter a subdomain you have not entered in the database earlier with phpMyAdmin. So it works saying tenant subdomain, in our case other, not found. Now as you can see the contents of index file which is hello world is also shown below. So we must exit to only show the not found page view. If we were to just write return view, the actual not found view will be completely ignored. Now let's write fire.mysite.me and since it is found in the database it shows the index file for now. Right here we could use the view share function to share a variable from the controller to all the views. In this case we want to share the tenant variable. 
Now open the index blade file and write the following title with under accolades the name of the tenant. As you can see it shows the tenant name from the database identified by the subdomain. Now let's write the one and it shows the one which comes from the database as well. And if we write something that is not found in the database, as we write here, it shows the tenant not found page. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. We got straight to the point. Now you can create a blogging system if you want, or anything that requires multi-tenancy. If you found this video helpful, it will mean the world to me if you would like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.